Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning we wanted to talk about the Senate Democrats and Democrats commitment to make sure that uh, we abide by a law that says in the first 30 days of session uh, we need to pass an allowable growth. And we are going to be proposing a 4% allowable growth for the next school year and uh, take our job seriously in following Iowa's law. And uh, with that, I'd like to have Senator Gronstall address another piece of our proposal on that allowable growth uh, plan. Uh, we also think it's important um, to make sure that uh, this year when we do, when we set the allowable growth for this fall, that it not raise local property taxes. So there, there are two pieces we're putting in this. One is uh, to make sure that the formula itself does not drive any local property tax increase and so we're going to appropriate money out of the taxpayer trust fund we created a couple years ago. Uh, there's 60 million that can be sent this, spent this fall in that fund and an additional 60 million uh, coming into it the year after. So we're going to appropriate 16 and a half million to make sure there's no impact from the increase in the school aid formula. And we're also going to um, do uh, some additional money to buy down and provide property tax relief in those highest tax jurisdictions in the state of Iowa. So, uh, so those districts that have low property tax value and therefore their second effort on the property tax is quite high, we're going to buy that down to the statewide average. That costs about 22 or 23 million dollars and we would appropriate both the 16 and a half and the 22 out of that taxpayer uh, trust fund that we created two years ago. Uh, just on the uh, governor's education uh, reform proposals, in addition to his tying uh, uh, passage of, uh, of his proposals to a denial of uh, allowable growth or school funding, we actually caucused on the, that issues as a uh, uh, minority caucus today. And uh, uh, you know, the governor's position that it's my my way or the highway, uh, uh, we found a pr pretty unreasonable position. It's also our judgment, based upon conversations with several Republican members, uh, that the Republican caucus is, uh, at least at this time, woefully short on votes uh, to be able to pass something. Just as a majority party, um, we talked about, uh, would we want to, you know, engage in politics as usual? and come back and respond in kind. Well, then our caucus locks up and you don't get a single vote from a House Democrat as long as this ultimatum that you have remains before us. And we decided that we would not respond in kind, but, but uh, would like to uh, tell the governor uh, very strongly that uh, I know our members are going to be very loath uh, to be supplying votes as long as you have this ultimatum uh, set before us, saying that there's no funding for schools until you pass our proposals. We still want to work and echo the, uh, uh, the statements we made in our opening day speeches that we, we want to work in a bipartisan way uh, on these issues. Uh, just as an inside baseball, in case uh, somebody uh, from the other party says something, uh, that the Democrats uh, didn't pass allowable growth in the first 30 days, which is what the law is, a few years back, we actually uh, changed the law. So we were in compliance with the law and then worked with local districts to give them spending authority so they could plan and avoid layoffs. Um, what's going to happen now is if we violate the law and don't uh, fund uh, allowable growth in the first 30 days, pink slips are going to go out, uh, the districts can't plan, um, and it will cause uh, uh, eventually, in the, in the, in the near term, also local property taxes to go up uh, because it's effectively they have to plan for zero percent allowable growth. So we still want to uh, say to the governor, the House Democrats will work with you on your reform proposals in a bipartisan way, but at this time uh, I, 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 there's not a single yes vote in our caucus uh, for his uh, proposals uh, because of the ultimatum he has laid down. We'll take percent what you passed last year in February? <coughs> um, I believe we have a sh but I also believe we have a sheet that takes you all the way ba all the way back to 1973. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. This is what the Senate did last year. We complied with the law last year. We passed in time for the other house to pass and for the governor to sign. We complied with the law. Uh, the law requires us to do this, and we don't think um, just because you got a law you don't particularly like that you ought to be able to ignore it. So what are you proposing to follow the law this year? We are going to pass this in a timely way, and we're going to pass the 4%, and then we will follow up rather quickly after that with, with, um, with an appropriation, or not an appropriation, with an allowable growth bill for the following year, for 2015. So we're going to do 14, 
um, relatively soon here, and we will follow it up quite quickly with with 15 in a similar way. Is it relatively soon next week or within the next week? Um, Process, pro, yeah, let's just say in the next two weeks. The next two weeks. Yes. And I'm sorry, did you say what the level was going to be for 15? No, I did not. Would you like to enlighten us? Uh, let's, let's let us get past uh, this piece that districts need to know um, really fast so they don't have to lay people off. Um, we'll be back to you on that. And the governor's reform package then will not be going anywhere in the Senate until this is done? Until no, absolutely. Well, that, that is not what we said. We, we, we met with people from the governor's office and we said, we, I, as a matter of fact, I said to a couple of his people, we could play the same game. We're not going to. We're gonna, we are going to abide by state law. We're going to pass allowable growth and then we are in an orderly way uh, going to proceed through his reform recommendations and move them as quickly as we can. Uh, we think there's a lot of good ideas in there. We share a lot of common ground with the governor on that, and we're going to we're going to do our best to work through that. We, there will be pieces to it that we don't agree with it. There will be pieces to it we want to adjust. Um, we're going to move through that in a timely way. We don't think he should be bullying us, and we also don't think our response should be to bully him back. That doesn't lead to anything productive. So we told his folks we were going to comply with the law, and then we were going to, in an orderly way, take up his recommendations. What is 4% equate to in state aid? 133, 134, somewhere in that range. 134 million? Yep. Plus the additional aid to offset property tax? 16 and a half million for the automatic increase that's implicit in the formula, and then another 22 or 23 million to go into the, with something called Peter, the property tax equity uh, relief fund, and that's the one that buys down the rates. We've got about $32 million in that. We, uh, we'd like to have a, a 32 and change, and we'd like to have 55 in that. And that would, but then 55 would be enough to buy those high, highest jurisdictions down to the statewide average. Mr. McCarthy, did I just say that the you think the Republicans will have the votes in the House to pass this federal program? Um, that's what I just said. Well, I don't speak for the Republicans, but I know that several of their members have been talking to members of our caucus and uh, are expressing uh, uh, concern or opposition to various parts of his proposals, and, and uh, several have said that they don't plan to vote for it at this time. Um, I also know that from uh, lobbying from the governor's office aggressively to our members, uh, that uh, they are aggressively seeking our support, uh, but, but feeling that we're being uh, bullied uh, it does not endear uh, uh, you know, our members to want to sit down and, and, and close that deal on these issues if, 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 it's, if it's a governor's way or the highway. We want to be able to negotiate in good faith. Um, just to be clear, you're talking about governor's education. Yeah, yeah he, he's saying that we will not pass funding for schools unless his reform proposal passes. But we're uh, talking about how some Republicans are saying they can't vote Referring to the reform proposals. Education. Correct. Yep. Are you in agreement on 4%? Um, you know, we haven't caucused on the amount yet, uh, but uh, we would we would be supportive of at least four percent. Yes, that, that, that's fair to say that. How many of these um, property core districts would be assisted? And are they a combination of rural? I I, I do not I do not have the runs on that at this point in time. We will we will be getting there those obviously for our own members, um, but it's a it, it it's a significant number of school districts that ha that are above. Uh, the statewide average, and, and I think, and, we, and there's some portion of those that we have already uh, several years ago. That first 32 million that we've got, we, we ramped up from um, from I think it was eight million a year for four years. Um, uh, uh, we ramped up to that 32 million to buy that down, and and so we're about. I'll just say conceptually, we're probably about halfway there, and we want to finish that. Since the governor put no money in for allowable growth in his budget plan. Throws that out of whack, and where, where does that leave you as far as trying to be able to, to reach some kind of agreement? What, what, what that does is it leaves us in a place that the law intended. The law, when it was passed, intended that we make K through 12 education our highest fiscal priority. That's what the law intended. By the way, the law that the governor signed, um, 
That's what the law intended, that we make it the highest priority by setting aside what we're going to provide for local schools as the first item of business in a single subject bill. No other issues can attach to it. So we're going to abide by the law. We're going to set uh, what we think is a modest level of allowable growth. So I think we'd like to do more. Uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to be in the realm of the art of what is politically possible up here. Uh, we frankly think it should probably be 6%, but we're trying to do what's in the art of the possible. And the law was designed and implemented with the governor, back, with this same governor back in 1995, to, uh, and, uh, uh, to basically say to local school districts and local school children, you are our first priority in this state. And, and then after we get done with that, set those monies aside, then we deal with everything else in the budget. But K-12 through education, Iowa has an education ethic, and it's always been about putting those kids first. So you're, you're really on the same page as the governor as far as providing uh, money to school districts so the taxes don't go up. That's correct. That's correct. Might some of this money sort of work as the reform funding for schools as well, or do you see that issue completely separate, and once you deal with this, then you'll talk about money for education reform separately? I, I, I don't see, I don't think we see this as a replacement for, um, for, for the reform effort. So yes. I'm trying to think of how to phrase that. Uh, so yes, we do think we will have additional resources that we will try to plug into education reform. Mm 